What's happening, Fezbro? Um, would you rather have global <laughs> warming or global freezing? Global yeah. warming or global freezing? Well, how much are we talking here, Fez? I would say probably like uh, the global warming that they talk about where, you know, things are going to turn into deserts. We're going to lose, you know, all the ice at the poles, that sort of thing. Mm. It's going to be flooding. So we're looking at what, 10 degrees different either direction or more? I would say or 20 degrees. I would say 20 degrees. Our 20 mm. degrees, we probably couldn't handle it, right? If we oh. started to get like 120 degrees in the, uh, in the summer... Uh, the place would catch on fire. I mean, when I, that's when when I was in Vegas, it was 119 degrees. Now, can you imagine if it was 119 degrees in Chicago and yeah. New York and Miami? Couldn't do it. There would the you suicide rate would be yeah. up. You would not be able to handle it. So, but if, in the winter, I know it would be cold, but everybody would just be living like they're in Minnesota, or Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like right. we would really park it, it up a lot. Yeah, that's why I would go um, global freezing as well because. Think of it like this. Think of the ice skating. I mean, when's the last time the, the metro area has even gotten to, you know, gotten ice skating? Unless it's a rink. I'm talking on lakes mm -hmm. and ponds. So just for the winter sports alone, the skiing, the ice skating, I'm taking global freezing any day of the week. Who wants to ice skate? We got so many rinks now. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the pond freezing over. <laughs> but it's First of all, fun. there's not even enough ponds left that are for public use. Most of the time, they're like, get off that my property. <laughs> get away from here. And they're man-made ponds, just so the house doesn't flood or sink or something. But there's no, nothing more fun than a pond hockey game where you bring your traffic cones... And your buddies who can't even play hockey go out there and play. It's the best. What are you going off that movie that uh, when they <laughs> played that? What, what was that? Oh. <laughs> Something Alaska? Yeah, uh, the Russell Crowe thing. Yeah, what was that called? Or Mystery Alaska? Mystery Alaska was that yeah. Russell Crowe? No, I mean we used to do that in Spring Lake. It was Spring Lake would fr used to freeze when I was a kid every winter, and it hasn't. Is that frozen. right, Blowhard? <laughs> 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 we would listen to Blondie. Difference is, uh, my decade was I, the 80s. I think if it was only 10 degrees, give me heat. 20 degrees, we got to go to freezing. Give me freezing either way. Uh, I couldn't imagine just, well, you couldn't step outside. It's just going to be that hot all the time. Yeah, but last couple winters, you've best bitched up a storm, Fezzy. And I know you used to like the cold, but you don't anymore. Yeah, but you I, did that thing where you would sit like this <laughs> through the whole show. You, you're picking up a grandma gimmick. Just shivering right to my bones. And uh, but with global freezing, wouldn't that? Turn right, her towel just fell off, and she <gasps> had to catch it. Wow, I made that up. Oh. oh, but with global freezing, wouldn't it turn like areas like the Sahara Desert, maybe Death Valley, into lush farmland? So I mean, we would. How would it? Yeah, because it, it wouldn't be so hot in those places. <laughs> All of a sudden, it wouldn't be hot in those places. That's not the only reason why <laughs> the soil's shot. <laughs> wouldn't it come back? Yes, you start to grow dirt because it's cold. I think that's so cold. We've got extra dirt. That land's probably ruined. It's not it like used Star to be Trek lush. Three. <laughs> Star Trek Three, where you can just shoot a <laughs> missile and revegetate. Yeah, what was that thing called? Oh, that was um, a search for Genesis. Spots. Genesis, yeah, Genesis was the name of it. Yeah, where it, you shot the the missile into the dead planet, and then mm. sometimes people come back. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but you may find that people come back. I think uh, people had plenty of time to see that one. <laughs> the title kind of ruined yeah, it well, as well. What about kids? Oh, okay. You know, you could be 13 going, fuck. I was planning on renting that. <laughs> <laughs> and the heat just seems like, global, heat, global warming seems like it would just scorch everything. Like we would lose more food to global warming than to global freezing. Well, I don't know, because I, I think if there was global freezing, gotta, the farming you, would go out probably well, uh, quicker. Yeah, I mean, it, it, here's the problem. What happens if certain insects or worms or whatever can't have... I mean, we're on a really fragile gimmick here that you can't go switching it too far out of it. And if one thing starts to go, then the next thing sl starts to go and on and on. Yeah. So we'd probably be fucked in either direction. <laughs> But just what kind of fuck do you want to be? That's it all it is. It would take us out of what scientists call the Goldilocks zone. I never heard of this before. Yeah, the Goldilocks zone where our planet is in just the right spot away from the sun. 
for liquid water to exist and for life to come around. Look over now. Now she's got her panties on her head. Whoa. She is wild today. She's taking off her top and she's just put her panties on her head. <laughs> it's a fun a new, day. Yeah. It's, it's a, a fun day. The thing about uh, I've never understood is I always take winter or colder weather over hot because you can always put clothes on. You're white. <laughs> You're not comfortable. <laughs> But I mean, uh, what was that thing that we got about redheaded people, Fez? Oh, that was a report saying that redheaded people have a lower tolerance to thermal pain. So pain caused by, you know, extreme cold or extreme hot. There you go. Than Holy non- shit. Than non-redheaded people. Although they have a higher threshold of pain for uh, pain that comes from, like, an electrical stimulus. So, like, they could take a shock better than non-red-headed people. Is that why your brother sent the shock collar here? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he knew something I didn't. I don't know. Yeah, I should try that out. But I could have got... I remember when I was 16 years old, I came back, I was drunk, and I tried to sneak through the basement, and I knocked into this pump that was, like, giving the water out, okay? So I knocked this pump... I don't, I don't know what it was. It was some kind of heater pump. Anyway, the pump comes loose, and there's water all over the basement, I'm trying to turn off all the power of the house because I want to repair the pump. Mm-hmm. But I was like shocking myself and shocking myself incredibly. But because I was so drunk, I didn't even realize what I was doing. My dad came home, came downstairs and was freaked out because he said, you could have fucking electrocuted yourself. Absolutely. That and, doesn't and, make sense. And he's like, you should have electrocuted yourself. And, and to this day, I'm, I, I've always been able to take shocks. And now you have superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the shock collar that your brother sent? It's, uh, it's in the office. I'll go, oh, go, get get, go get it. His brother sends his stupid gifts all the time. Well, first of all, you guys have stopped wearing the other ones, which I'm really disappointed about, but I, uh, I wrote to someone. I knew it. I knew they wouldn't last with it. Whatever you guys bet or promise to do, Goes out the window. Remember, Fez is going to have a mohawk, mohawk? Right. Out the window. Well, now I've got to kind of comb down in a Chester A. Arthur look. That's not a mohawk. <laughs> you had to keep a nice, hard 1970s mohawk. And that's why I hate to agree to anything on this show. I guess my... No, the betting stinks here. Yeah. You say, yeah, you're the one who fucking bailed on the last one. Uh, what happens here? Do you have the shock collar? Yeah, I have my shock collar. All right. Uh, do we know if this is a bad thing? This is to be used on dogs? Yeah, it's supposed to be used to train dogs, you know, not to bite, not to leave the property, you know. So they get a little zap whenever they're doing something they're not supposed exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know why. I think my brother wants me dead because he keeps sending in things. Well, he wants to be part of the show. A lot of times, brothers want to be part of the show, and they're like, if they think he's funny, where are they going to load of me? <laughs> I should have. I'm the real talented brother. Yeah, I should have. Put take- it down in case uh, he gets it fixed. I don't want it to be a you know a non fun shock. I could have taken that hint on FBA. My brother signed up just under the name ESD's brother. <laughs> Oh, what so were his proud. posts like? <laughs> he's like 40, too. What was his post like? Uh, no, he's just like, yeah, it was a good show. He's very supportive. <laughs> well, he's supportive of, of the hosts. I'll say that. He doesn't want to see them in pain. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> hung out with him at your wedding, him and your sister-in-law. And your sister-in-law was pretty drunk. He was like... <laughs> Personally, I find what he does uh, degrading. <laughs> She's like, uh, I find it's an embarrassment to the whole family. Oh and I go, God. you know what? You're a little drunk right now. We don't know what you do at work. So you can't be, you know, we can't judge you. Yeah. All right, put that down, Pitsy. Put it down, Dave. Okay, put it down. Let me see it. Now, here, put it on the, on the table. Do we know whether it's working or not? There's an on-off button. Okay, here we go. I know, it's got to be pressed. Well, put it to one first so it won't hurt you. Oh, I do that from here. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you hold it, Dave, and you should just barely be able to feel this. Okay. You're pressing it? Yeah. Hold on. There's some sort of on-off thing in here. 
We used to run a stun gun thing on this show all the time back when we did the Ron and Ron show. We were obsessed with it. We used to play spin the stunner. And all <laughs> during the show, we would just spin. And if it landed on you, you had to be stunned. Looks yeah, like this it, thing isn't working. Looks like it's on. All right, but let me. You can't feel it when I hit? Let me move up to. Wait, this thing is. There it is. Oh, I, I'm feeling a little bit. Okay. I'm feeling a little tingle. That, there was barely nothing, though. That's so. uh, three. No, that's not working because that should be getting you pretty good. That's about a five. Well, you go see if you can work on it, uh, Pitsy. Ron and Fez show. Bob Newhart uh, tickets. You can pick them up. Today is the last day. And a little later on in the show, I'll let you know who the next Unmasked is. Bob Newhart tickets. Email live at xmradio.com. Live at xmradio.com. Bob Newhart, that is going to be tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Comics Comedy Club in New York City. Now, there is a woman who is uh, getting into it with De Delta Airlines. She wanted to fly her conjoined twins from Arizona to Maryland, and they told her that she had to buy two tickets for the conjoined twins. She's saying, no, they're connected. They're only one person. She, she only has to buy one ticket. You know what I say? Conjoined twins, free tickets. <laughs> Why can't we? I mean, first of all, this is a uh, terrible malady that these people have. You think we need to be doubling them up on the tickets? If there's one place the government could step in, <laughs> it's to get these poor kids from one place to the other. And let's cut them out, uh, apart. I think a two-for-one discount is in order. I don't think a free ticket because they're taking up two seats. And those are two seats that could go to two other people. I know, but do those other, are those other people suffering? No. Or with the type of society that we can't say, hey... Hey, right. let's do something here. Well, let me tell you, you think Babe Ruth would ever say two tickets? You know what he would say to these kids? I'm going to hit two home runs for you. Make sure you're watching <laughs> that game tomorrow, little men. Two home runs from the Bambino. Or at least a double. Well, I think a two-for-one deal is being generous. If that's extending a hand. See, I think now it's, she says it's one when it works out for her. But, you know, any other time, I would imagine, there, if, there, if there's two different names for the two twins, then yeah, you gotta, you gotta buy the two tickets. They, um, now, would you rather have fame and money and power? Yes, that's what I'd <laughs> rather have. Or be a conjoined twin. <laughs> or, or have friends and family. Uh, you can't get both. You can't have both. Fame, money, power, friends and family. You gotta choose, like a wimp, friends and family. Even though in the back of your mind you don't know what you'd really do, the only thing that you can say is friends and family. I don't think so. I think if you had fame, power, money... No, you would not get them. That's the fucking devil's deal. I know what I'm saying. So yeah. what's going on with you and Casey would be over. You and your mom would be over. You and your brothers, all that doesn't work out for you. But think of all the life experiences you could have. Traveling, you could okay. buy, uh, you know, a, a, a I understand. I, you're not going to teach me anything about money. <laughs> but remember what the devil's deal he set up here is. You give up. Your family relationships, and you're not going to get new ones. You're not going to have any friends. You're going to be lonely and rich. Now, you know who you are right now. Yeah. You're willing to give up Casey, your mom, your brothers? It would hurt, but I could reflect on what I had. So right now, if I'm the devil, and I could turn my thing, you would say goodbye to Casey for your fame, money, and power. Say goodbye to my wife? Yes. I know. Um, That's what we're talking about. That's the fucking devil's game. I would I would have to maybe, yeah, I would think about doing it. No, no. it's either yes or no. I would. I'd have to. You'd give up Casey? Just because of the power I and understand. the fame. You don't, you don't even have to, under, you don't <laughs> have to explain to me. Uh, what about you, Earl? Here's a lucky thing for you. You're not in any relationships, and you don't have any close friends. This is going to be much easier for you than David. David has a life. 
Well, I would go with, I'm still going with family and friends. Still, because fame, for fame, money, and power, it's so stressful. Now, remember, you're never going to make big money now if you take the, 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 that deal. You'll just get by for the rest of your life. And I understand that, though, but you could, but I'd rather share that life with people I love and people I'm close to. Then why don't you try to build that life? <laughs> why don't you try to have family and friends? Or, or at least it. go outside at night. I mean, my, I try to stay close to my family, and, and the friends part, I'm working on it. All right, let me explain something to you, just so you know. You being the eternal son isn't being in a family. You, <laughs> family means at one point you move on from, from son and become father. Yes, and I understand that. You've got no money now, and you've got no family. That's where you are. You're the exact opposite, like those poor conjoined twins. You're neither <laughs> Ike nor Mike. What about you, Watley? Uh, give me the friends and the family. If you had the power and the fame and everything, like Dave was talking about owning a sports franchise, you're sitting in the owner's booth by yourself. Yeah, but... Forget it. That's no fun. Have, you could have minions. You know, yeah. You yeah, have people but, that have to answer to you, but you won't have anyone that will care about you nor you will care about. Yeah, there's no one to share any of that stuff with, so why bother? Give me the family and friends program. Because I could enjoy it on my own. I, I'm never going to have this type of joy away from it. You know, just being a common folk. Uh, Ron, you're on the Run Fest show. Hey, guys. Man, you're just a fucking loser. You know that? To give up your newly new wife? No. His current <laughs> wife would be gone. <laughs> my, my wife. You're fucking nuts, man. You're such a fuck. I what? hope you fucking die. Well, first all right, of all. That's really uh, a little too far. <laughs> 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 that that wasn't one of the show. choices. <laughs> Well, no, it's just, it's just, I, you know what? I would want the same for whoever I cared about because we, people were, were leaving out power. We didn't just say money. Yes, I'm not going to leave anyone just for money. I'm not that stupid. But power, I mean, I would want someone to say, look, I'm going to leave all of you behind, but I'm going to become the president of the United States. I would want that for my f friends and family. So you would want Casey to leave you. If she said she would be president of the United States, she is so smart. Mr. B, and and good. Now you're turning it the other way. This is going right, from fine, your selfish fine. needs. I would hope that someone would would be able to see that with me and say, Dave, I, I'm going to say I'm going to be president, but I have to leave all you guys behind. I would hope. Could people you imagine would say that. what a bad job you do as president? <laughs> now remember, this is only about your selfish games. Now you can't go out there and act like, oh, I'm going to do good for the world. The thing is, you have the fame, the money, and power, and it's an empty. Thing. You don't. You're not making any more human right contact, really. But I'm still powerful. Okay. I'm still a prez. Uh, Kevin, you're on right of Fez. Hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah. Hey, uh, fame and fame and fortune, power. Because uh, I'm divorced, and I don't know, just on my own. Great. Uh, here's Mike. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hi guys, how you doing? Yeah. Go ahead. What can we do for you? I just want to see Dave. Does Casey listen to the show? Yes, she does. After what you just said, do you not realize you're in a world of shit? Well, again, I would. I'm going to disagree. Uh. She's the one in the world of shit. She's the one with David. <laughs> 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 again, it's it's. I would get the fa I would get money. I would be able to own the Yankees. I I would think that people would even want my friends and family would want to. Yes, yeah, just explained all that. Yeah, so 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 I don't see what the big deal is. I don't think it's that selfish. All right, uh, what else you got for us, Watley? Oh, happy birthday to uh, Gina tomorrow. Gina's birthday. Gina, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so happy birthday to her. Boy, she's a hottie, pill. I'm mad for her. Yeah. She is so cute. G do me a, a favor here and explain to me. How would somebody like her throw a life away with Franklin? <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> she, he's an artist, you know. I know. But am I crazy here when I say, and I, I know I have a tendency to do this with women. I don't think he's good enough for her. <laughs> I'd rather see her with somebody 
I don't know, that was running a couple of radio shows. <laughs> Somebody that could care for her. Uh. To treat her like the princess that she is. Well, he has that big bellowing voice. Well, he acts like he's with that zombie down in the basement. <laughs> he was acting. Oh, <laughs> uh, was that he? That was a film, yeah. Right, not a documentary. No. Well, okay. that was fiction. Well, I'll give him credit for this. He is over his head with her. Way she, over his head. She's like a better version of Jada Pinkett is the way I, I see her. Better version, Miss Pinkett. I'll throw down that gauntlet any day of the week. Well, it seems like you're always throwing gauntlets down. <laughs> Uh, what body parts do you think will get phased out with, like, the next human evolution? This comes up all the time. The appendix is gone. Yeah, appendix is completely wisdom, useless. Uh, wisdom teeth is done. What use are tonsils? Is most t Tonsils are over with, too. Adenoids. All this shit that you have to get a, uh, rid of now. Those are all inner things, but I think... What about outer? What about <laughs> the outer? What about the outer you? But you're wearing a handy lift shirt today. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yes, I am. I swear that's where you're going to end up. <laughs> um, but what about, like, the fact that we're such a technologically driven society, okay, and we, ha we use speakers and headphones. We think of how many times, you know, you wear headphones a day through iPods and this and that. I think by 200 years, we probably won't have ears anymore. Well, first of all, 200 years isn't how evolution takes place. How long is it usually... Uh, take, like, it takes like millions of years. Oh. I hate to say that in front of the Baptist, but it, it takes a long, long time for these things to start happening. All right. But in, like in a million years, I doubt. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. In the year 2525, 20, 25, if man is still alive, just do a little Zager and Evans. Let's open early, grab some music. I would think like toenails would leave. I mean, they really can't have a use anymore. You're not really, you're not even scratching with those. Yeah. And from there, would toes just go, too? Will we just... Well, I, we, don't we need toes for balance? They said we don't need the pinky toe anymore. Oh, okay. The pinky toe you can do without, but the rest of the toes you need for balance. Oh, okay. I thought it was like an extension of like a climbing thing. Is why, you know, we got toes in the first place. What do you want to have? Well, hooves? I, <laughs> not, not so much hooves, but maybe just one toe area. Oh. Where the toes have kind of... The pinky toe is gone... And the other four have just kind of melded into so, each other. So like a flipper. You want flippers? No, not fl not a flipper where there's webbing in between them. Well, you're saying melding. Yeah, but I mean into just one like solid toe bone. Toe bone. Just a big toe. <laughs> yeah, just one big toe. I guess more like a hoof than a flipper, though. That's where I was at, at the beginning. Yeah. You want a hoof. I think hoofs are disgusting. Or I wouldn't paw. want those. You want a hoof or a paw? Because I don't want that pad. I do oh. not like the feeling of a pad. That pad Damn looks it. awful. Because, uh, like, on a, a dog... Why don't we do this? Why don't we just saw the feet off and put wheels down there? Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> Think how much better basketball would be. Guys would be going 90 miles an hour up and down the court. I don't know. I, I wouldn't want, like, peg... The way Fez is describing it makes it sound like we're pirates. And we well, would Fez, have I think, legs. was on for some, with something with the toenails. He had me there. By the time he was getting rid of the toes, I think he's out of his mind, <laughs> and I think he has to be stopped. <laughs> Suddenly, the scientist has turned insane. But I agree, toenails don't seem like that big a deal. They're more of a nuisance, I suppose. But, I mean, they, they protect your toe from elements and from your socks. I don't think you can just dismiss them. Uh, here is uh, Mark. Mark, you're on the Uh Do I need pubes? Well, you got to uh, understand something here. Uh, pubes are showing that we're moving along. At one time, we were completely covered in hair. Right. And now we're down to pubes. So, uh, and women are doing their best to get rid of them. Yeah. So am I. Oh, I, yeah. I like this. <laughs> you like to keep your penis like a 10-year-old girl's. <laughs> nice and smooth. I just <laughs> won't want anyone look seeing what I have. It's disgusting. Uh, Tom, you're on running Fez. Hey, I just had something to say about the uh, toenails and the hoofs. Mm-hmm. A hoof is a giant toenail. See ya. All right, so you want a hoof? Yeah, I want one a hoof. Giant, one giant toenail. Yeah, just, just now. Do we have to be shooed? It seems like you are a uh, uh, thing, Fez. We're gonna have to be shooed, and I don't want to have to deal with that. <laughs> Motherfuck! This thing keeps coming off every two seconds. That's gonna make kids cry if they have to go get hooved as the little kids. 
So, but not the flippers. And, I'm you know, the guy... Over. I'm moving over. I can't fucking stand this fucking studio right now. The guy uh, mentioned, you know, pubes. The last caller. You gotta think all hair should probably just go. I mean, is there a point to it anymore? It's not really keeping us warm. Well, we can part it. Hair looks good, don't you think? Hair I looks like a chick with great hair. Hair looks absolutely great, but on the uh, whole needing it s scale, it's got to be down. No, we're, I think we'll need it even more because the ozone layer is going to be depleted. So if anything, we would have super afros and, and super long hair. I That's think. kind of interesting. But, you know, you just can't go uh, strictly by needing it. I mean, now that we do have wh wheels, you really don't need legs. Oh, that's true. So, needing is not 100% of why you have things. What's he doing over there? I don't know what he's up to. I'm putting the call screen on your side. I don't want it. Why do we have the call screen over here? On whose side? Just on the monitor so you can see what's coming in. Oh, I don't you care. Tell me, tell me what line to go to if you want. Why would I want to? Bob Newhart is going to be unmasked tomorrow. That is at 1 p.m. Comics Comedy Club in New York City. If you want to be part of it, today's your last day to email live at xmradio.com. Live at xmradio.com. Put Newhart in the subject heading. Uh, Haynes, line two, you're on the uh, Ron and Fez show. Bob Newhart is going to be on mask tomorrow. That's I can't yeah. hear anything over here, Fez. Don't I get uh, some kind of monitors? If you want to be part of it, they should last email line. There's nothing on that line, Dave. Hanging up. I heard him talking. He is. Uh, All I heard was us feeding back. No, I heard him talking. Yeah, I heard him talking, too. Oh, I didn't hear him talking. <laughs> so that's screwed up. studio stinks. <laughs> Still quite a bit of bugs in it. Uh, here's Bill, line one. Bill, you're on the Run of Fez show. Bill. Bill there? <laughs> Hello. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, boys. I have a question. What do you think about the balls? I mean, they stay, they were internalized when we were, as embryos. You think they should just stay up there or hang down? Well, we found out that the sperm would die if kept inside because of the heat. Now, we only found that out like a week or two ago. I, I knew you'd have the answer to that, Ron. Thank you. And I only got it from listening to the Ron and Fez show. That's the only way I... Uh, was able to pick up on this. Uh, let me go over to line nine, Kurt. Kurt, on line nine, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Go ahead, Kurt. Uh, yeah, most useless body part, Earl's dick. That is true, <laughs> Earl. If you don't start and use that, now, you do use it for pissing. Am I right about that, Earl? Of course I use it for pissing. But you also say you can piss from your ass. <laughs> so do you really need your penis? How do you pull that off, Earl? I do not piss from my ass. Yes, he does. He does. Because have you ever... How I, would you know, I've Dave? Never, I've never seen him at the urinal. No, uh, same as Watley. Watley's a sit-down peer. Yeah. So tell at me how do you sit down or stand up, Fez? Uh, I sit down no matter where. Yeah. Now, why do you do that? Oh, because of your vagina. No, not because <laughs> I have a vagina. Easier to uh, to wipe for you when you're sitting down? It's just, you know, less splatter, so I just sit down. And I don't know when something's going to come out the other end, so I'm just... You're I... worried that you'll be <laughs> sitting at the urinal and shit yourself. You'll yeah. be standing at a urinal and shit yourself. Totally. Swear to God. Yes, I swear to you. Uh, something with, with the medication is... Yeah, there's something really weird. Seriously, going... There's some, uh, yeah, you're not going to last, buddy. Haywire. And I've been watching you today, hurricane and jerking. You're worse than you were yesterday. I can see your legs from when I'm sitting over here uh -huh. and what I'm now going to start and call the parlor. <laughs> and um, I'm watching you just go every which way. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, today's the end of it. We're going to have to shoot you in the neck with a track <laughs> dart and take you out of here. All right, uh, Kevin said we don't know what we're talking about. He's on line three. Uh, hi, Kevin. You're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, buddies. You guys sound like a million bucks today. You know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I feel about like a buck 380. Things are just not going my way. Uh, the million bucks ain't worth so much in 2007. Uh, hey, Church. I'll bet. 
the bad thing I wanted to throw the wet blanket on you, the only reason we lose or gain anything is so we can make more babies. So you got to figure out whatever we're going to lose or gain is to attract more women. Well, now, would the, on some kind of subconscious level, do we understand that there's too many of us now, though? Like, at the time uh, of Christ, I think there was only like a million people walking around the planet. So in 2,000 years, we've taken that over to 4 billion. So at some point, I mean, if all this thing is a, about being on a subconscious level to keep us surviving, at some part of us must start to know, wait a minute, more babies is a bad thing. But we still got to drive evolution if we're going to have all these changes. And the more... Uh, more yeah, no. uh, per- See, I disagree with him completely, too, because... It, it can't be just for sexual and reproductive terms because, you know, like a giraffe developed a really long neck and that was for food survival, not for sexual survival. But that is part, it's for, he's talking about species survival. Oh, okay. So everything he says that, that you evolve evolves for the species, where the stuff that we're talking about is just stuff that we like to do. Like you're like, <laughs> who needs toes? Well, be, uh, whether we have toes or not, according to him, has nothing to do with whether we stay alive or not. Uh, bring me in the kid that was once known as Pepper 2. Pepper 2, come on in here. By the way, we need a uh, new name for him. We found out something very, very exciting about this young man. He is a world-class athlete, ranked at one point number one in Madden football. Two times. Two times champion. 05 and 06. And what else were you uh, ranked high for? Uh, Tiger Woods 2003, held number one for 12 weeks. Now, we have all of these monitors set up. If we were to uh, set up a tournament in here, would you be able to take on all the listeners and beat them? Uh, That's a tough order. Wait a minute. You're number one ranked Madden in the world. Uh, 05 and 06. Still, here we are in 07. (laughs) I would say the fact that I don't think that we even have another listener... Ranked. How long does it take you to play the normal Madden game? Uh, about 40 minutes. All right, 40 minutes. If we put up a big prize mm-hmm. and we invited in four listeners, yeah. can you guarantee us that you'd beat all four? I don't make guarantees. See, I, I stuff, worry about this kid. Stuff can happen, man. Fumbles can happen. You, you told know. us no one scored on you in two, uh, in two years or something crazy in Madden. Uh, I went, I went eight weeks playing three games a week where no one scored a touchdown. See, I can't imagine anybody being able to beat him. No I feel one. like we yeah. can bank this kid. In other words, I'm going to say this. Yes, you can. All right. Um, do me a favor, uh, Earl. Get a hold of Wiki. Tell him come up with some kind of great prize that we're definitely not going to have to give away because no one can beat <laughs> this guy. Can I, can I be on my home system? What's your home system? Uh, GameCube. Uh, does anyone else play GameCube? I play GameCube. So you don't think that would be a problem? No, I don't think so. I think the controls are kind of similar. I mean, they, they, they're, they're different from PlayStation 2, which most people play. They're, but yeah. they're just It's the one that I've been playing the last two years. That's why I haven't been ranked in 07 and 08, because GameCube doesn't have the internet. So you don't get the rankings for yeah. that. No. Now I know why he's number one, because only five-year-olds have GameCube, so he's been <laughs> playing shitty competition. Why do you got to come and try to fucking run down my gimmick? When I'm setting something up. No, I held I held the rank on 05 for Xbox. No, I, I, I asked you a question. Why don't you answer me? I wasn't trying to kill it, but... You see it's setting up a fucking gimmick, right? Mm-hmm. What do you got for us? I didn't see, anyone, I didn't see Fez bring up any of your prep today. No. He didn't. So this is your fucking point to jump in and go, what can I do for the show? When somebody else is coming in to help the show? I thought it was, yeah. Why don't you sit there, big man? You sit there and give us all your stuff today. Because I'd like to see it. Because Fez hasn't used a single fucking piece of prep. He's reading out of the fucking newspaper again. Again. Okay. Now, if I was you, I'd be thinking, what the fuck? Ron told me uh, two weeks ago, every day, he didn't want that to happen. Right? Yep. But that don't bother you? No, it does. You fucking come jumping in here when you see me talking to this young man, setting up something for the show. Why don't you tell me why it's a bad fucking promotion? Oh, I didn't say it was a bad promotion. I just... I thought it was a funny thing. Funny how? Explain comedy to me. 
I'm not going. I can't explain comedy to you. Anyway, kid. Can I bring something a little funny from behind the scenes from my first day here? I wish you would. Um, my first day here, I got to sit in the, the phone screening booth, and the one of the things that I remember was uh, a Seinfeld subplot bit. Yeah. And you kept playing it over and over, and, and Pitsy looks up and says, why do they keep playing it? And I'm like, because it's the shot at Fez. It's, kind of, it's comedy. Was that right, Pitsy? I don't You're remember You're fucking that. judging back there? No, no, I don't remember that. I'm glad you told this to me, Till. I'm fucking really glad to hear it. Earl, you're running some fucking system over there, bro. I, um, this is not what I, I this what he just did just came out of nowhere. I really didn't know where what. Who was just did? What Pitsy just did? Okay, thank you. Uh, let me go over here to uh, Nate. On uh, it looks like it's line five or six there, Dave. Thanks, Nate. What do we got? Yeah, I think uh, going back to the old. Uh, Useless body parts. Our brains will be re replaced by numerous, super powerful nanotechnological microchips. All right. Now you do have to look at this between the what we're doing with technology and what we're doing with chemicals. It really does look like we're not happy with the the guy the the brain that God gave us. When most of us. In this country now, or at least compared to 10, 15 years ago, uh, a high amount of people are using chemicals to make their brains work differently. And you're one of those people, Fess. Yeah. Yeah. You would th th yeah, it's got to have some long term effect on the human brain. Well, but forget even that. I'm saying the short term effect of do we take the brain and start making it the way we want to? Yeah, I would say yes. Thank you. Yeah. Let me go over here to uh, uh, line eight. I think it's ONA party whack bag is what it says there. Uh, how you doing, man? You're on Ronnie Fuzz. Hey, Ronnie. I just wanted to call you. Am I on? You're on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the phone seemed a little screwy. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to call you out on something. Uh, the population of the world is over 6.5 billion right now. We w went over 4 billion sometime in the 70s. I had no idea of this. I really don't know uh, what happens in the yeah, rest of the world. But uh, I had read yeah, before... Yeah, you mentioned it a few days ago, too. And yeah. All right, so I'm fucked up. So it's over 6 billion. Uh, you know what? Yeah, it's Big like ass prize closet, billion, my friend. Something like that. Now, if we're up to that high... You got to figure sooner or later, this thing's got to start tipping on its side. <laughs> Maybe the earth will just roll over very, very quickly. Especially with such a high concentration of them in Asia. Uh, hey, uh, Gray. Uh, Pitsy, sit, sit down. I, wanna be, I want you to be here from when you got the big jokes. Uh, Gray, you're on the Ron Fez show. We lost you. Let's go over to Jimmy on line four. Jimmy, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hello. Go ahead, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Uh, when was the last time we needed a tailbone? Love you, Uncle Big Cat. Thank you. The tailbone, uh, is it used for anything as far as sitting or balance? I don't think it's used for anything. I think it's just a bony appendage that's useless. It's but just, it's not that bony, if you think about it. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like it's sticking out or doing anything wrong. It's just used for pain. At this point, when you fall down and hit your tailbone, it's the worst fucking pain imaginable. Nothing else hurts worse. I'll tell Get you, rid I've, of it. I've heard it twice in my life. Once going ass ass all the way down a waterfall, <laughs> bumping all the way down oh. a waterfall. Another time getting off a boat, uh, I was kind of walking this way down a ladder and the ladder kind of slid against the ocean and <laughs> hit my tailbone. And I mean, you can't do anything for weeks. And I didn't even break it. Or crack it, just bruised it, yeah. and, the, and the pain you couldn't get away from it. I fell on a diving board and oh. and bruised my toe. It's weird. All three things deal, dealt with water, right? So maybe well, why we else are you going to be doing anything crazy? <laughs> right? It's always fucking water. <laughs> things that happen around water. I'm telling you right now. I saw three people break their necks before. Every one of them had to do with water. Yeah. We need to get rid of water. If we're going to do anything to keep our safety going. <laughs> Uh, here's uh, Don, line three. Don, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, I just wanted to say uh, I missed one spent Fez. 
He was and better then. I was ranked then. in Madden 2004. So what are you saying? You would be able to beat this kid? Yeah, I could definitely beat him. Yeah, I don't even think that we're going to do it now because I found out the GameCube is just played by five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look at the show prep tomorrow to see if it's uh, suddenly approved at all. Fez, you're just going off the newspaper today? Yeah. After me bitching every day for two weeks? Yeah. Still no fucking confidence yet. Uh, yeah, that's the exact word for it. Were you aware of this, Dave? Fez uh, doesn't have confidence in his staff? No, I wasn't totally aware of that. I thought uh, yesterday was pretty good, but... Uh, uh, I'm fucking dealing with today. I know. I really, if I could tell the listeners, yeah. hey, I want you to just go back and listen to yesterday's show. Yeah. Then, I would, then I would have a fail-safe thing. But I got to feed the fucking coal every day. Have you noticed Fez hasn't felt himself today? He's a little fucking thrown off, a little nervous. I started noticing it, yeah, at uh, uh, half past the hour. It was before that. It was mm. starting the fucking show... With zero prep. And just going off page six. I'm waiting for the fucking, uh, the Lou Pearlman story to pop back up again. It's that <laughs> fucking uh, much of a problem. Um, let me go over here to, uh, Gray. Gray's on, I believe, line six. Hey, Gray, you're on the Run of Face show. Go ahead, hey, Gray. Ronnie. Hey, Fez. Hey, buddy. What's up? I, um, I wanted to tell you a funny story about, uh, my wife. She was uh, like four years old, playing on a, on the uh, in a on a playground, and busted her tailbone. And now she's kind of paralyzed in her left leg. That is funny. Thank you very much. Good that one. is so adorable. That funny story. She fell fuzzy and she's paralyzed. Hold on. I'm gonna uh, jot I'll, that. I'll, 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 I'm gonna jot that down later, so they can have a. Uh, Funny stories to tell people about. Well, when he said the tailbone got broken, I started to giggle right there. But when he threw in the paralysis, he really tagged it. Can't get enough of that. Uh, Fezzi, I want to uh, wish our buddy Lene a happy 100 uh, shows on the radio. Oh, okay. Uh, Lene D's musical roller coaster Saturdays on thereisnoradio.com. Is it called the musical roller coaster? I think it's something like it's, that. Am I getting it wrong? I believe it's Lene D's magical music, magical musical Saturday mornings. Oh, okay. There's no musical roller coaster. It's <laughs> a crazy name, even for a kid. You're on your musical roller coaster, kids. So it's w 100 shows this coming Saturday. And what is she on, Fez? What does she play on? How do, how do you listen? You go to thereisnoradio.com and look for the Lene D show. Uh, now, speaking of an AD, let's have her do the opening for Polo. From the legendary Wanna Fest Studios in a predominantly white neighborhood, Wanna Fest presents Showtime with the Polo. Hey, Polo, you like some movie. Hey, Polo, you like some movie. How you doing? How Polo. are you, Polo? Paul, what's How your middle you? name? My middle name? Yeah. Carl. Tom? Carl, and Carl. Uh, my... You look like a Carl. You know what? Let's get rid of the Paul thing and just go with Carl. Oh. Hi, Carl. <laughs> 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 All right. My confirmation name is Vince. All right. Or would you rather go with uh, uh, Carl Vincent the Third? Because you're, you, the... you have no idea who your real parents are, right? No. I, I have small ideas. I, I know that my grandfather was a judge in California, and my mother went to MIT. Sure she did. That's what I was told. Your mother went to Mitt. Actually, you came out of her <laughs> Mitt. That's what they're saying. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm hoping. So how are you at math? Very bad. Yeah. No wonder she got rid of you. Uh, did you ever f figure out why they got rid of you? They were young. Yeah, I mean, in those days, sure. You know, they didn't want to... Back in the 40s. Down ...if they had a big career in <laughs> science. Science. <laughs> we can't keep this baby. <laughs> Madam Curie was his mother. I, I, I mean, you know, the biggest thing is when I was adopted. I got the feeling that he's like Danny DeVito, the twin. He's just the runoff <laughs> for the good stuff. The thing that really bugs me is when I was adopted, I was told by my mother that, oh, that it was a rich family that was going to adopt you, but we loved you more. So you knew your mother enough for her to talk to you? No, I'm talking about my adopted mother. Oh, you, that, you always oh. call your adopted mother your mother, too. Thanks. Oh, okay. So you knew I have no other mother to talk to her. I thought, how old was he when they when she gave him up? 
Uh, I wish when, I could give them up now. <laughs> I was very, 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 very young. I suppose a week old. So uh, they were, do you know what hospital you were born in? Yes. Uh, it's, I think it's uh, the Bronx Hospital. BX, huh? The boogie I, down. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the, the official name. but Wouldn't this be they, great if you found out your dad was Mickey Mantle? <laughs> well, no, because well, you know, my dad was a drunk. Your father was Joe D. <laughs> it would explain the alcoholism. That is true. You are an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. Paul Carl DiMaggio. I'll, I'll be honest. I uh, fantasize Jack Nicholson for some reason. <laughs> you You're older than him. <laughs> same same ha- it would have to be a fantasy. <laughs> same hairline. No, because he screwed around a lot. All right, we got want to uh, get a hold of somebody and see if we can't figure out who your parents are. That'd be great. There might be some money in it for me. There might be. Whoever finds out, and they might be. Now that you don't have that mean wife, you could have a fucking definite, nice meeting up with them. And your re- real parents are, or your adoptive parents are dead. So no one could get their feelings hurt by this. <laughs> it's finally time. You're an I know, orphan. When you go Paul. through the process, I talked to my mother and well, my father. I didn't talk to that much. But I talked to them, and they never wanted to give me that much information. Yeah, well, I wouldn't either. I feel like, fuck these people. I'm the one who raised you. Right, exactly. They didn't want to hear that I even cared, so I never did. You know. All right, Paul. So uh, you got some movies to review this week, right? I suppose. We got the Heartbreak Kid to start out with. with, uh, The Heartbreak Kid. All right, that's a great one, because that was, of course, Shawn Michaels' thing. So would you say... If we were going to, to assign a wrestler to every movie that's coming out this week, obviously this one would be Shawn Michaels, correct? Yes. Why? Because he's the heartbreak kid. The kicking uh, abilities of this <laughs> film? Well, I mean, there's a lot of stories with this film, supposed re, you know, uh, return of the Farrelly brothers. You know, you can discuss Ben Stiller and why he has such a huge career. And, of course, that it's a remake of a Neil Simon, Elaine May movie, Charles Grodin from this early 70s. So did you I like mean, it? Oh, yeah. I mean, as far as the Farrelly brothers go, it's, it's about the gross-out humor that they, uh, that they pioneered with uh, something about Mary. So, I mean, it, it's got it. It's got the gross-out scenes. Should I reveal some of the big money shots? It's up to you, Paul. I never I tell know. you how there's to do a, your reviews. There's a donkey erection in it. All right, you ruined it for me. <laughs> because <laughs> I really planned on going to that. Okay. All right. There's a pussy ring. What All kind right. of movie is this? <laughs> Fantastic. So far. I'm I'm saying it's a cute film. I just don't understand why Ben Stiller is so huge. I just don't get it. He's right gigantic. Now. He may be the world's biggest movie star right now. And and why? I mean, you know, because he's the weakest thing in this movie. He makes money. Hand yeah, but fish. why? Why do people like him? Why do people show up is what Paul's asking us. There's a certain comfortability with Stiller and Sandler where they, for whatever reason, have convinced America that they're your friends. And, and that's why people go to see their movies. They think that they're buddies with these guys. I think it's all the slapstick. Well, he is right. Uh, Dave's right about this. It's not like either one of them puts on airs and acts like a genius. They act like regular Joes. Just lucky guys. Who make $25 million a picture, though. Right. Yeah, and, and I mean, he's going with two very, very young women in this movie. And he's, he's you know, pushing 50 at this point. So, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I <have no> <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got for us, Paul? All right, well, there's a lot of other... You know, we're going into Oscar season, so it's getting crazy for me to try and sort it all out. You got Michael Clayton in uh, Limited Release, which is a very good film with George Clooney. And what is this even about? I mean, it's the moral ambiguity of uh, lawyers who handle huge corporate clients and all kinds of rich, sleazy guys. Did you like it? Yeah, I liked it, but, you know, not everybody's up for a downer like this. It's yeah, like I a, get a little sick of these kind of movies. movies. Get up for a downer. Don't you hate when they can't even think of a cool movie title? And you just have to choose a lead character like Aaron Brockovich, Michael Collins, Michael Clay. It's just boring. Come up with, you know, the wind tunnel. You know, no, what? The wind tunnel. What? <laughs> the wind tunnel or something. <laughs> the wind tunnel. Where are you going this weekend? Wind tunnel. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're off to see the wind tunnel. Should be fantastic. Well, something like that. I mean... There's a lot of films. Well, hold on, I just want to say what Pepper too, uh, has to say. So he was literally sitting there judging what we were doing on the air. 
well, as it was happening. I, I don't think he got the bit. That's why. I see. All right. It's good to know things because I'm not going to get them from Earl. And uh, I, actually, somebody sat in back there not too long ago, a friend of ours, came to me and said that uh, the commun- communication doesn't exist in that room, Fizz. Doesn't uh, exist. Oh, the only time there, I guess it is going on is when it's a screaming match. Right. All right, so the wind tunnel, you liked it or not? <laughs> I liked it. I mean, as I say, there's a lot of complex, morally complex films that are coming up that are really good, that, that bring back that 70s you know, feel that we all love. I think it's a pretty good year it's shaping up. It's going to be a very good year. What yeah. wrestler would you give this Michael Clayton? Uh, Hulk Hogan. Wow. It's that big. All right, what else you got for us? I don't know. Yeah, the, the, you got uh, the things, you know, Harry Potter wannabe with the seeker, the dark is rising. All right, I don't even care kids. about it. Just give it a wrestler. Yeah, exactly. J Lo produced I'm gonna a movie say about a rapper. <laughs> I'm going to give it Undertaker. <laughs> Fez, what would you call it? Um, I'm going to give it uh, Macho Man. Really? Yeah. Uh, Pepper Two? Papa Shango. Uh, Dave? JYD, Junkyard Dog. And Pitsy? The Godfather. Hmm. All right, what about my kid could paint that? We had the director on the other day, uh, Paul. All right, this has obviously been a, an ongoing controversy about this kid who's making big bucks, you know, painting. And, and the, the uh, director, I, I guess, took a very adversarial, you know, put himself in the movie. And it, it, but that's it, not adversarial. Question. Well, to a certain extent, you know, I mean, it's hard to say how much... You didn't see this film, did you? Paintings by this <laughs> you did not film. see this film. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I know it. I bet he's like this with most films. <laughs> I bet he hasn't seen them. He just hopes that we haven't. All right, for the, I'm going to give the wrestler the red rooster. <laughs> Pepper Till? Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Fez? Lanny Poffo. Dave? I'll go Ricky Steamboat because Fez took Lenny Poffo. <laughs> Bullshit. There's no way Steamboat would be in a movie like this. <laughs> and Pitsy. D'Lo Brown. D'Lo Brown. Look who just showed up, baby girl. Oh, is she with Danny? Is that how bad my life is? That her and Danny are a couple? Maybe. That would, that would ruin everything for me. Oh, my God. They're hugging in front of me. She kind of is. <laughs> oh, that's just brutal to me. That's just the worst thing that could ever happen. All right, what else you got? Uh, uh, an interesting small film uh, with uh, Penelope Cruz and Gwyneth Paltrow uh, and Martin Freeman and Simon Pegg. It's about called A Good Night, about a guy who dreams about his perfect girl and maybe will actually meet her. Now, I saw the trailer of this. It looked very odd. What did you think of it? It's a dream state, you know, I mean, where real life and dreams, you know, combine. And, you know, it's, so it's kind of familiar of a lot of... Films where, uh, where you know, you don't really know reality. Maybe David Lynch, but more funny. So it's a funny David Lynch. <laughs> right. Uh, are we getting the director on, uh, Earl? Uh, no, we're not. Okay. Yeah, I think this is... Then I give it Brooklyn brother. Brawler. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I don't think it's going to work out. Pepper Two? Sandman. Fezzi? Um, Ray Mysterio Jr. Dave? Because he said small film, <laughs> Little Tokyo. Bullshit. Little Tokyo would never have anything to do with this film. <laughs> and Pitsy. Gangrel. All right. Uh, what else you got for us, Paul? I, there's an endless list of small films. So, I mean, you know. Wait, and then hold on. Things I just like... want to say Baby Girl doesn't have to sit on that hard bench. Bring her in here where she can sit on the lovely, lovely French. <laughs> you come on in here, darling. Into the parlor. <laughs> yeah. Come into the parlor. <laughs> Said the spider to the fly. <laughs> come on in. Have a little seat. Relax. Is the microphone right? Just, um... Tell me the truth. You're not with Danny, are you? Of course not. That would be the sickest, mm. most disgusting thing that could ever happen. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something right now. I can't get over the fact that Angel fucks with that goddamn balls. Up. I don't. I don't know how he's done it. Although I will he say has this. Nice I will say this. Those four may. Those four eyes that those people share may be the four most attractive eyes in history. <laughs> Balzac. Yeah, he's got great eyes, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, what color are they? They're like green, right? Is she blue and he's green, or Maybe. one's blue and the other's green? 
I think he might. I don't know. Where, where Danny, sure. on the other hand, has hideous eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bloodshot. <laughs> like an eight ball. And matter of fact, <laughs> one of them bl- isn't even his. <laughs> 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 it was dug out by a grape, with a grapefruit spoon by an angry parent and then replaced. So don't go off with him. He's disgusting. Okay. What are, you, where, are you going to lunch with him? I just came from lunch. What did you guys have? Pizza. Damn. See, I'd be taking out getting you something nice. <laughs> Not like his pizza lunch. Did you have to buy your own slice? Yeah, I did. Oh, Son of a bitch. That's just a dollar dollar fifty. That, da- that Danny <laughs> knows how to treat Seriously. the ladies. I cannot stand when someone well, makes well, a well, woman well, pay. I owed him lunch. What does that fucking mean? A woman never owes a guy lunch. Thank you. Well, never. it's his three-year anniversary on the show. So he gets a slice of pizza <laughs> and he can't pay for it? Yes. Come on. Three pepperonis. Oh, my God, that <laughs> bastard. <laughs> you owe me dinner, then. Okay. <laughs> and breakfast. <laughs> it's going to be a very long night. All right, Paulo? Yes, boss. Uh, when I have baby girl here, I can't even begin to think about you and your okay. stupid thing that isn't even no one cares about. I understand. By the way, Fuzzy, you're talking about uh, what's going on. Uh, the weather's staying very, very warm. I'm looking at uh, next week uh, here in uh, Bo- in Boston, seven, high 70s. Uh, yeah. It's a very warm October. I don't care for or this. Or October. Yeah. You know what? Al Gore was so right. Somehow that the Earth, we've gotten out of our gravitational lane, and we're just heading into the sun. It doesn't even feel like October 3rd, to be honest with you. Because it's the 4th. We call it E-Rocktober. <laughs> hey, by the way, and I, I found this out because our good friend Mike, the teacher, congratulations, Mike. Uh, wrote a bit. Today's the anniversary of Sputnik, and it was something like, would that be 50 years ago, Polo? 50 years? Uh, it's at least 50 years, yeah. All right, and here we are, baby girl, on satellite radio today. We need to thank the Russians for every good thing that's ever happened to us. I wish we were more like the Russians, Fez. Why? It's very oppressive there. It is? Yeah. Well, and, and, sir, and Putin's not giving up power. All right, so, uh, yeah, Mike, uh, right there. Matter of fact, he's written his, he's published today in the Ashbury Park Press. Uh, the editor there is Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great newspaper. Yeah. He should be proud. He and, is proud. Yeah, the Asbury Park Press, actually, for, for real, is a great local newspaper. APP.com, uh, if you want to check out Mike the Teacher's article on Sputnik. What is it? APP.com. Well, he must have been the last one to turn it in. He's 50 <laughs> years late. <laughs> the Russians are in space. <laughs> it's like AP, except with the one more P. Baby girl, what are you planning on doing the rest of the day? Going back to work. What kind of work do you do? Accounting. Okay, now... I, we could use somebody here. Uh, we're looking at a member of our staff. We need somebody to make out with Lily more, <laughs> like you did the other day. That's why I came by, to see Lily. By the way, she's here. Oh. Close your eyes, and she's going to kiss you again. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> now, the, um, uh, you know, Angel Fuck was... Uh, she was very upset. With she me. was very upset, and she had every right to be. And I will quote I her. Blame you? She goes... Why would that long arm knuckle dragger think that she could sit there and make out with baby girl? What? And I go, now that I think about it, Lily does have orangutan arms. Oh, yeah. Uh, have her, go, you know, put her arms out at her sides. Yeah. The wingspan is huge. She sort of reminds me of like a female um, Sean Bradley. The center. <laughs> you know what? I swear to God, you bring up Sean Bradley's name more than his own mom. All the time. The last time I did, we were on the sidewalk. It wasn't on the air. But she also, with there's something about Lily's shoulders where it always looks like she left the the hanger in the in her sweater because they're just so pointy. How was she kissing? She very good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did she try anything inappropriate? No. Try to touch any of the naughty bits? No. All right. Look at Danny waiting to the, next to the door like he's your husband. He wants more Jeez, pizza. Give it a rest. I gotta go. All right, go ahead, honey. Bye. There you go. Bye bye. Bye, baby well, girl. I like when you leave because you walk away. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Whoa. She's oh. adorable. Danny's not. Oh, close the, she didn't close the door. Now she is. Is Yeah, he's bitching no, up a no. storm about you. I'm I'm detailing. Pretty women walking with gorillas down my street. Look at him. Don't touch her. All right, he just grabbed her ass. Very Fantastic. 
Earl, what if you were with a woman once? What would you do? I would do lots of things. <laughs> I, would, yeah, I would hug her. I would kiss I would her. Hug her. <laughs> Why do I sound like I'm eight? And hug her and squeeze her and love her. Who and call that? her George. What is that, Fez? Is that the abominable snowman from the Bugs Bunny cartoon? <laughs> How old are you? Because every <laughs> reference that you do is 50 years old. Yeah. That's a classic. They I have like you. Sputnik. Classic. I remember because it got interrupted for the Sputnik launch. Because <laughs> he's all Sputnik from his bedroom window. What is that? <laughs> I'm trying to watch the Looney Tunes. Earl, if you could blow yourself, would you? Uh, no. I would but here's the thing. You wouldn't. That would mean no one would blow you. Forever. <laughs> Once in a, have you ever been blown? Oh, yeah. What was the guy's name? It was not a guy. Mm-hmm. Not at all. When's the last time someone sucked on your penis? A uh, year and a half ago. That's a lie. If Mr. Bennington, have you ever noticed that whenever we talk relationships with Earl, every answer is a year and a half ago? Yeah, it's true. It's a kiss. When's the last time you had a girlfriend? When's the last time the penis suck happened? Because that was a year and a half ago. When's the last time you had a finger up your ass, Earl? I've never had a finger up my ass. Ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> all right, let me check with Pepper, too. What else are they saying back there? Are they just riding the show like it blows? No, that's, that's pretty much it. That's my only story that I can remember. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what I did before you because you have woken me up to what really happens around here. This young Madden genius, Fezzi, this world-class athlete. Two-time. Ranked uh, number one in the world. But it's just in shitty GameCube. Like, mm. this show stinks, Fez. The Run of Fez show stinks because of GameCube. Yeah, somehow the game system. Mm. Uh, Paulo, is that it for you? Well, right, you got on. me only Somebody, uh, wondering uh, if I Paulo, could find uh, my mother Paulo now. in and then go to line two. You got to lock Paulo, Paulo in. No, you don't turn him off. Oh, okay. Got uh, go ahead, Ryan. What do you got for us? Ronnie, am I on? Yes. Holy Jesus. Yeah, Gossamer. Gossamer's that big stupid thing that he was talking uh, why would you cut him off? What is wrong with you, Dave? Oh, I was about to send him to the big-ass prize closet. Shit, that was my fault. Had, yes, yes, it was. I tried to lock Paul in. While why would was... you do that when the other guy was already up? I thought I didn't lock Paul in. And Okay, I see what, what, what uh, happened there. Paul, go ahead. I, I'm excited about finding my mother now. That's a movie? No, you just got me thinking about my mother, my real mother. Uh, let me tell you this. If... We find your mother. I yeah. want Earl to have sex with her. Because <laughs> you're into the uh, Grand Milfs, right, Earl? No, I'm not. I'm not in the Grand Milfs. You wouldn't bang a grandmother now? No, not at and all. Yet, and that means you get no pussy. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's right now. Well, you're yes, fucking but I'm, gay. But I'm not gay so either. so minded Anytime you turn down fucking vagina, you're gay, in my opinion. Do it, or else Apollo can get that little brother he's always wanted. And yeah, would actually be a brother. <laughs> There's plenty of attractive <laughs> seventy year olds anyway. Frankly, Earl, you can have sex with any member of my family. Wow, nice. What about with your new fiance? No, that's I'm talking about my family that that abandoned me. Could he have sex with your fiance? No. Are you two still together? Yes. I hear differently. You hear things, but yeah. that's because she has, you know, tried to keep her sanity by staying away from the madness. I'll just tell you who the leak is, so you know. It's creepy. I know. <laughs> it's creepy. <laughs> he tells me everything. Okay. Who? Creepy. Who's that? Uh, the little kid that follows HTG everywhere. <laughs> the five-year-old that HTG drags around. Okay. As she's looking well, for her version of the Marlboro Man. Look. Guess who she thinks is attractive? Naked cowboy. Really? Yeah. Oh, I don't see that at all. That's ridiculous. Hey, can I get uh, that up on one of these TVs so I can watch them? Yeah. I'd like to see what they're fucking doing, mm -hmm. too. Paul, you got any other movies to push? I got a hundred movies, but, you know, it, it gets... If you, if you could only see one wanted... movie this weekend, what would it be? I would say... But, you know, because of these limited releases, you can only see them in New York and yes, L.A. Yes, that's I mean, where I, I live. If I leave New York, it's to only go to L.A., so don't worry about it. Exactly. So go see Michael Clayton. I don't have time for that, Paul. I still haven't seen Into the Wild. Should I see that? Absolutely, because it's about searching. For your mother at MIT? Uh, now you've got me all thinking about, you know, what's it all about? Alfie. <laughs> I know. And just to say, 
Mel is a wonderful person and does everything for me, and I'm so happy. But? But what? Uh, but there's always a but with you. Yeah, but I'm crazy. So you guys are going to get married or not? Yes. Are you going to get married on top of the Empire State Building? How did you know that? Creepy. Tells me everything. Uh, no, seriously. How did you... Where did that come from? Who's creepy? I don't know who this creepy I is. I have <laughs> a pal talk spy, <laughs> and I'm not going to say who it is. I'll just give my nickname for him, Creepy. So you're talking about Sheepy. No, that would be too obvious. I wouldn't be given my spy away. <laughs> I got two spies. I got Creepy and I got Mooch. All right, they, there's another, uh, I mean, Mafia Life Chris, you know. and Yeah, Mafia Life Chris tells me a lot of stuff, too. Yeah, when is this Empire State Building wedding? I mean, she's good friends with What do you think, Fez? Think to yourself. They love movies. Oh, yeah. When's it going to be? New Year's. No, it's Valentine's going to be Day. Valentine's Day. And I'm like, uh, have you ever been up that high on fucking February? In February? <laughs> it's gonna, you're going to die up there. And Creepy's like, well... They want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to take her out to dinner and discuss this more and firm it up, actually. What's that? Firm up what? Her ass? Everything's fine. Why don't you ask her to marry you on the air? Why don't you get married right here and we have uh, Dawn Cumia do it for you? <laughs> Dawn is fantastic at that. I'm... I really don't want to bring her into the madness. I mean, there was a point where she she got really into it, and now she she's trying to back away from it. All right. So you're turning your back on the Rana Fez show. No, I'm not. I mean, I, I'm going to discuss it with her, but I know she won't come on the air right now. Well, what if we do this? Ask her if the only people that go up there are you, her, Dawn, and Creepy. All right. Well, let's see what happens here. We'll just send uh, Creepy. will be holding the mic for us. All right. Hold on. And only one comes down. Mel! <laughs> They, they told me about the Empire State Building. <laughs> How'd they know about the Empire State Building? You told Ron. You told Ron? All right, so she's in, I guess. All right, perfect. All right, do you want to talk to them? No. See, it's the same. Yeah, it's, isn't it odd how life goes back and forth? <laughs> we have to apply for it. We have to apply for it, apparently. Uh, don't worry, we can do that through XM. Okay, but we also got to find my mother. Right, I want her there. I would love to have her at the wedding. <laughs> what am I doing at the top of the Empire State Building? And who are these people? I know none of them. And, and I was here at New Year's and nobody else was. Yes. <laughs> but, but you see, we, life is very complicated right now because she's had a full-time job cleaning up my house. Your mother? My Mel. I get so confused. <laughs> my Mel mother. All right, we're going to break, Paul. All right, boss. 